The biggest threat that Allied tanks had to face during the First World War was not the anti-tank mine or grenade, but field guns. Field guns were mobile artillery pieces, and in World War I, even high-caliber guns were capable of being moved around easily. German artillerymen would either try hitting hostile tanks by using indirect fire from a distance, or depress the field guns to fire directly at their targets, causing devastating damage. There were powerful weapons against enemy vehicles, as stories from the last year of the war tell us. During the push by the Allies to force the German army out of the forests in France and Belgium, camouflaged field guns fired at point-blank range at struggling tanks while hidden machine guns and infantry engaged in brutal fighting. The uneven surface made it difficult for the tanks to progress while they were repeatedly hit and completely put out of action due to fire from German field guns and armor-piercing rounds killing the crews inside. Even smaller artillery pieces had their use against enemy vehicles. The German army had specialized squads of soldiers who used smaller but more mobile field guns to react to the threat of tanks. These groups would deploy their guns against enemy tanks, then retreat behind friendly lines before the enemy could react. The mobility of this tactic gave the German army a quick way to react to threats, and in smaller groups, enemy tanks were not as dominant as one might think. However, this practice expanded much valuable ammunition and was of increasingly limited effectiveness as tank armor became thicker. The first dedicated anti-tank field gun appeared at the end of the war, and by the start of the next world war, anti-tank field guns were a common sight in many European armies. Firing ammunition from longer barrels to achieve higher muzzle velocity with the goal of defeating enemy tank armor. <laughs>